Hey everybody, it's Jameson with Four Leaves Glass. I'm going to show you a project as I work on it here uh, with another color de Vera mold. This one I got um, this summer, although I think it's been around for a while. It's, yeah, it's in fact it says, I don't know if you can see that, three inch heart, uh, copyright 2004. So yeah, it's been around for a while. But it's this nice deep heart mold. Maybe some of you have it or you've seen it. And with it, I've made a couple of these, uh, what I'm just calling um, paperweights. So I got a nice, uh, I put some scrap in. I just find it's a great way to use up some scrap. So I put in some really colorful little scrap that I put in first. So you treat this with zip. I put that down in the bottom and basically put in enough to where I got a full heart outline. And then I covered it with Tecta. Uh, I'm a bullseye user. So I covered it with Tecta quite a, quite a bit. I'll weigh it out and give you an estimate. Um, and then full fuse this thing and it comes out beautifully. Now there's texture, a little bit of texture in the mold as, as all molds have. So the back you'll see is textured. Maybe you can't see that. Yeah, you can. You can see how the back is kind of textured a little bit, but then the top comes out nice and shiny and glossy and smooth. Uh, I have a pretty good firing schedule for this, so I'll share that as well. There are bubbles in there, but I think that's really cool. I love bubbles in glass. I think it's organic, it's handmade, it's unique and one of a kind and shows the fluid motion of the glass. I think it's awesome to have bubbles uh, on certain pieces. And so um, what I'm gonna do is show you how I make one of these. I put these little dots on the bottom and this is a nice little, nice little paperweight. Great way to use up scrap. So I'm also making some puddles. You may be familiar with the process to make puddles. You um, stack some glass and then you chop that up and you refire it into a puddle. And so these are all gonna be refired. Um, this is using bullseye glass. I think this green was willow green. There's a, the lavender. Um, there's avocado green in the middle, which is kind of a lighter streak. And then also some uh, neo lavender in there as well. Uh, this is a custom piece, a commission piece I've been asked to make. So what I um, did was, you know, usually for cutting up these pattern bars to do these puddles, I'll just use mosaic tile nippers like so. Um, this one was extra thick because I used extra glass and I didn't fire it as long. And so um, I decided instead to use a um, frit maker. If you're familiar with the piston style frit maker, uh, I would put uh, some pieces in there and then I would drive that piston down and what I found is that and as you can probably see in there I got a lot of little bits which actually are kind of cool I just need enough of these nuggets to make a or a, you know to make some puddles for a piece but then I got a lot of little bits in there that you can see and more so than normal so when I do with the mosaic tile nippers I do get some of those but not nearly the number that I get when I do uh, with the, the frit maker. So if you've got one of those piston style frit makers, um, what I found is I get a lot more of these little, I don't know, scales or, or glass wafers, if you will, uh, when I do with that, with that piston. So I thought as scrap, these would look really cool in a heart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put enough in here to get my base layer and I will weigh it and then I'll figure out how much Tecta to put in. This is 200 grams exactly. And I think this is just the perfect size. It's exactly what I'm going for. So I'm going to shoot for a 200 gram fill weight on this again, uh, because that's the size of heart that I really like. Uh, and so let's go through the process. I'll lay this in. You know, so here's what I've got to do because I use that frit maker, um, some scraps of metal can come off. And so I'm going to use a magnet to sort through here Sorry, I made a lot of noise there and get any of the iron bits out, the metal bits out. Um, and then I've got, you know, kind of good clean frit that I can use. So I'm going to go take care of that, do that now, and then I'll come back and I'll fill up this heart. Okay, I thought I would just show this for anybody who is newer to glass and not sure what I'm talking about. This is the frit piston that I use. Uh, it's made by a pretty well-known um, glass supply company uh, and this is a beast i mean this thing is super heavy and what you do is you drop your glass down in there and then it's got this you know basically blade that's been uh put in there and all you have to do is crush down and uh and smash up your glass but as i mentioned because this is metal you can get metal bits and so it comes with a little magnet and then what you do is you just basically run your magnet through carefully not to cut yourself but run your magnet through and then um, 
if I don't know if you can see on the video here, you leave the magnet in the bag because then uh, what you have to do is just move the magnet. Can you see some of the black pieces of metal? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, little black metal fragments. So I can, uh, you know, take the uh, take brush these off of the plastic, and then I don't have to fight to get them off the magnet because they're they're already uh, protected by the plastic. So that's how you sort through your frit and clean it up before you use it. Okay, and if you're into making your own frit, this is also a very handy um, tool to have. This is a nesting frit sorter, and so it sorts powder, which I'm going to catch in this bowl, uh, and then basically fine medium and coarse uh, frit in a variety of different sizes. And so you start with your largest one on top, obviously, and you pour your frit in and sort that on down. I don't really care for powder off of this because I don't think it's going to be very pretty. What I'm trying to do though is just sort out these big chunks to save myself a little bit of time. So I just dump all that in. Okay, now I'm going to put my mask on. Since you are working, since you are, you can't hear me well when I'm wearing the mask, that's why I didn't put it on right away. But since you're working with powders, uh, I want to wear a mask. Okay, so, oops. sorry, take the mask off. Okay, so now that I've sorted this, kind of shaken it through, I've got the biggest pieces on top. As you can see, the biggest chunks, and then I might use these in, you know, jewelry or something like that. So I've got these, you know, kind of uh, medium, and then some fine, uh, you know, pieces, and then really fine down below, and then under that would be uh, some powder. Not much powder, to be honest. That's okay, I wasn't trying to make powder, so I didn't smash the heck out of this in the piston. I just uh, wanted to kind of break it up and get some good pieces. Um, here's another little uh, tip for you. You can see Jason's Deli. This is just a food tray. My daughter got some pasta from Jason's Deli. I find that these, you know, this is really nice thick uh, plastic. I like to reuse stuff where I can. Uh, and so I wash these out and then I use them in, in my glass shop just to, you know, rinse stuff off, wash things as a little catcher, a little sorter for, for a variety of things. This and uh, Chinese takeout containers usually work really well uh, too. Once they get beat up over time or scratched, I'll just toss them, but uh, recycle them. But uh, anyway, I just, this is not an advertisement for Jason's Deli. It's just a quick tip. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these larger chunks and I'm gonna put them into my mold. Okay, now I wanna be careful when I put these in because I don't want to, um, disrupt the zip. You know, I don't, I don't want to scratch it. I don't want to get a lot of powder that comes off when it's, um, when it's, uh, uh, when the glass is in there, because then that gets trapped in my piece and I don't want that. So I am going to be relatively careful. Uh, I have kind of a variety of different ways that you could probably do this, but perhaps the easiest is just to get a good old fashioned plastic spoon and, uh, and spoon it in with your, with your spoon. Okay, before I fill this up, here's another little tip. So I mentioned that that heart was 200 grams. That's a nice good fill weight on here. I just use a, a silver Sharpie and I write on the back of my molds because what it's not gonna hurt anything. So the mold itself weighs 300 grams. The fill weight that I'm going for is 200 for a nice even 500. So when I start to fill this, I'm gonna take it back over to my scale and weigh it see how close I am to that 200, and then I know how much uh, tech did I use to fill it up to get to my fill weight. So, here you go. This may or may not have come from Jason's Deli, I have no idea. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna take these pieces, and again, kind of carefully lay them in there. Okay, so now I think I've got it filled pretty well. Like I said, I want this to resemble a heart when it comes out in color. So I've tried to get this frit in here in a way in which it kind of fills out a the heart shape um, fairly well. And I might use, you know, some tweezers or something, even just a paintbrush to kind of move them around. But I'm very careful because I don't want to scratch uh, that zip off of the surface. I kind of don't like the way this guy is standing up. So let's see if I can knock him down a little bit. That's a little bit better. 
So uh, I think I've got pretty good fill on that. I can't really see the bottom. I might put a few more pieces kind of right in the middle there. And uh, now I'm going to take it over to the scale and see what I'm weighing. All right. I just took this over to the scale. I put it on it totally by accident. It was an even 350. So I happened to put 50 grams of this uh, large frit in here, which tells me that I now need 150 grams of Tecta to fill it up. Now, what I do here is, I don't know that I have enough, but I will clean up Tecta and then I will break it up into shards and call it, you know, clean Tecta. And then that becomes my fill on jewelry and stuff. I don't have 150 grams here, so I'm gonna have to take a moment uh, to clean and chop up some more Tecta. So I'll be right back. Okay, I have a bunch of scrap Tecta here that I cleaned up um, <laughs> in a sherbet bowl. So again, <laughs> reusable container. If you watch all my videos, you're gonna know all my dietary habits here. Um, okay, so I've got this Tecta and it just needs to be cut up. Uh, this is a little gizmo that I made based on a, um, somebody's suggestion online. I don't even remember where, but uh, use one of these, what the heck do you even call that? Anyway, a band uh, there and you use a little tiny one here on your nippers and then you put a little L bar. Can you see that? Little L bar, the small band keeps it onto your nippers and then what you do is just a little glass factory here. You can move through this relatively quickly. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses as I am and uh, I'm going to just knock through all this Tecta really quick. Okay, so in just honestly a few minutes time, four or five minutes, now I've got basically a half a jar of really nice uh, pieces of Tecta here that are larger. Now some of you may have watched that and thought, dude, you just showed us a frit machine or a frit maker, why didn't you use that? And I could, but the problem is that thing honestly pulverizes the frit and I just want big large chunks. I don't want medium and fine and powder out of this. I just wanted large chunks. So. And I didn't have to worry about, you know, metal bits and stuff contaminating it. So this was super simple, it took me five minutes, and, you know, now I've got a stock of this for the future. So now I'm going to measure out 150 grams of this to finish off my heart. Okay, I just happen to have one of these little cups handy, and so this is 75 grams, so I just need two of these, basically. So all I'm doing with the first 75 is just kind of sprinkling it in there. And... Now I'll go get 75 more. Okay, so now I'll take the last 75, kind of sprinkle it in there. Again, I'm going to be very careful if I'm moving this around not to knock any of that zip off. The tail of this heart looks a little light, so I'm just going to kind of get that spread around a little bit. And now we'll fire this. I'll post the firing schedule. Um, you know what, I'll see if I have some instructions for my little tool here that I can post because you might find that interesting. I'll see if I can find those, uh, but I'll post the firing schedule. If you're unfamiliar with YouTube, as you're watching this video, there's usually like a little drop down. If you're on a phone, like a little carrot or something that's underneath the video screen, if you just hit that little drop down, you get the description. And in that description, I almost always include uh, firing schedules and other uh, odds and ends. So uh, that's where you're going to find the firing schedule for this. Let's fire it and see what happens. Okay, another little quick tip. Uh, I showed you one of these because I used it to fill my frit. I love these things, portion cups. Little portion cups, two ounce portion cups. This one is cups and lids. You can get these at, you know, maybe the supermarket, um, kind of a Costco, uh, Amazon, that kind of stuff. These are just so damn handy. <laughs> I use them for all sorts of things. I use them upside down when I put um, glass on to, um, to dust powder, clear powder between layers. I'll, they stand up off the, my surface well. Uh, and I use them for things like this. So when I've got this frit now, uh, I'm gonna put this into some cups and kind of save it that way. Snap a lid on it. I'll write on the outside if I need to what it is. And it's just a handy little thing to have around. It costs, you know, three bucks for a hundred of these things. Uh, and I use them all the time. Okay, so I have to tell you a quick story. So I'm saving the larger pieces and then the medium-ish pieces, and I just dropped the sucker on the floor, and that little lid 
kept in tight, uh, kept tight, and so I didn't uh, have frit all over the floor. Yay! Little plastic cup. Okay, here we are. Here's the heart. Let's take them out. Popped right out. You can see a lot of zip residue on there. So let me clean this up real quick. See what it looks like, but looks like I'm gonna be pretty pleased with it. Oop, I keep bumping this with my hat. Sorry if it's uh, shaking on you. All right, there is the finished piece. So, as I said when I fired this, I don't mind bubbles. I think bubbles in something like this looks really cool. And so um, there's the, the back side. You can kind of see the texture on there uh, that you get from that mold. Uh, obviously, there's all the, the glass, but um, I think that's beautiful. I think it turned out really nice. So I'll put uh, a couple little uh, uh, rubber bumpers on the bottom of this, and that'll sit as a very nice paperweight. Thank you for joining what ended up being a much longer video than I thought, but I shared some tips. Hope you enjoyed those. Uh, if you like all of this and want to learn more as I learn glass, you can learn along with me by subscribing to my channel on YouTube. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you liked about this one. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.